sign of Lucian's body. Has Dallas beaten us here? Peering through the iron grating, you can see how it connects to the strange pipework beneath. The blessed altar seems to want to be touched. In the space beyond the altar, the pipework shifts. The altar seems to respond. Beyond it, something creaks, as if the pipework was moving. The sound comes from beyond the altar, but also echoes and gurgles behind.
A blessed stone altar. The cool stone seems to beg to be touched. The altar seems to respond. Beyond it, something creaks, as if the pipe were... Peering through the iron grating, you... no farther. Only death lies beyond. Blood need not be spilled. Bones need not be broken. Preserve thyself and flee. To cross this threshold is to plunge into thy grave. Do not decide in haste. Very well. Embrace thy fate. Charming.
sensing something. I could feel it. Careful, it feels like that lever did something. Something happened, I think. script. The truth hangs heavy upon the air itself, unspoken. This is the point of no return. Somewhere beyond this point, you shall be undone, or you shall ascend. There is no middle ground. I don't know what you did, but you just released a source blood. I thought I'd come and see what all the fuss was about. Should have known you were getting yourself into trouble. Looks like the big moment has finally arrived. I will do everything I can to support you, Godwoken. I will pray for you. I think you'll need it. Don't underestimate the power of true prayer. This is a place of incredible power where a single prayer holds the weight of thousands. Your heart and soul will fill as quickly as they're drained. Consider it a taste of your divine future. Prayer will enrich you and your disciples will empower you, strengthen you and trust you in all ways to do only what is right. Of course, it's up to you whether or not to listen. I know how I'd respond, but you do you. Malady wearily chuckles to herself, then bows her head in a show of unexpected but sincere reverence. Looks like my investments paid off after all. You've shown me kindness in the face of my sins. My worship is the least I can offer. Now go. Rivalon needs a new divine. Dallas told me about you. 
You must be as hard as diamonds and twice as bright to have come so far. Your divine welcomes you. Surprise! Lucian frowns at the figure, then bestows a benevolent smile upon you. All that you know of him flashes across the panorama of your mind. You open your mouth to speak. I underestimated you, Godwoken. You have proven to be a formidable foe. You have my respect. Respect, indeed. Lucian's gaze rests upon you and goes through you. He takes your measure entirely. Lucian, we should tell the Godwoken the truth. Yes, I agree. It is time we dropped our masks. Dallas nods, then reaches for the sides of her head. Where there was one face, suddenly there are four. She takes off the mask of the shapeshifter. A skull is revealed, bejeweled and ancient as the void. I am eternal. Surprise, surprise. Fear not, Godwoken. Dallas is on the side of all that is good. She is helping me rid Rivalon of the influence of the Source. Listen to her. I shall tell you the tale as I told it to Lucian. Long ago, the Scholar Fane discovered that the veil between the world and the Void was made of Source. Our Seven Lords desired this power. Of course. Silence, slave. Our king forbade the Seven to reach for this power, but they didn't listen. Instead, they rebelled and sent the king and his people into the void. With the source they stole from the Vale, the Seven created the races so they would have worshippers. During their lives, worshippers collect source. When they die, the gods feed from them. It's an ingenious system. Our souls are nothing but vats for the source-hungry gods. The Seven made a mistake. By taking its source, they tore a hole in the veil, and it is through this hole that the Void finds its way into our world. The Seven's lust for power let in the Void. Our goal is to close the hole they created, to restore the source to the veil. When we are done, there shall be no more source in the world. No more gods, no more worship, no more war, no more chaos, no more demons, no more void woken. Rivalon will have peace at last. My people cannot be allowed to return from the void. They are tarnished. They are void woken. They can only bring chaos and death and. There is more, but she hesitates to share it. Then she decides that she must. I was but a child when the war started. The king, in his fury, separated my family and scattered us across the world to be... entombed. He did this because it was my father who gave the Seven the secret of the Veil, against the king's explicit instructions. Ironically, the king's punishment is what saved me from the Void. Only a very few Eternals escaped banishment. Myself, my mother, and my father, the scholar Fane. I seek vengeance against the King and the Seven, and I offer my father the chance to atone for his sins. Dallas has her reasons, as you can see. I seek peace for Rivalon, and for myself. Her ambitions align with my own, and I always believed the goal justifies the means. During the war, the real Dallas found my tomb. I took her place and quickly realized that Lucian was the key to my vengeance. And I was the key to the salvation of Rivalon. While Dallas sought the Eteran, I started draining the gods of their source. Slurp, slurp, slurp. One more word from you and I shall use the leash. I had to hide from the gods. So I had the walls of this crypt equipped with tenebrium and protections put in place. It worked. Everyone, even the gods, thought me dead. 
As divine, I was created, empowered to stop the void. I was the avatar of the Seven, their strength and their weakness. My bond to them allowed me to drain them of their source. Indirectly. When the Death Fog was unleashed, many elves died. With fewer elves to worship him, Tyr Sandilius weakened. This gave the God King his first real foothold back in the world. To strengthen himself, he sent his Void Woken, the remnants of my people, to hunt down the sorcerers seeking to reclaim their source. We turned the appearance of Void Woken to our advantage. To fix the Veil, all source needs to be removed from the world. Blaming the sorcerers for Voidwoken made them easier to capture. The Aterra now contains almost all of the source the Seven stole. Soon, we will be able to heal the Veil. The Void shall be banished, and I, Lucian the Divine, shall return from the dead. A false Divine, of course. I shall have no power. But the world will not know this. I shall demand peace. And we shall have it. The plan is almost complete. We have made so many sacrifices, Godwoken. All of us. Of ourselves and those we love. One last sacrifice is required. For the future of Rivalon. You must surrender your source. Decide. Be the true hero and give up your source. Or be forced to submit. Like a coward. Like a slave. There is no other way. The source of the world is required to close the veil. All of the source. We only lack yours. Good. You understand. The world shall not know this. I shall return from the grave, a divine without power, yet all who desire power shall fear me. I shall carry the secret of my lack of divinity. Peace. Alexander was God-woken. Once, years ago, I should have killed Damien, but instead took him as my son. Quite the mistake. Now I was forced to kill Alexander, my blood, but once more, I could not. The task fell to me. And me. We already had more than enough Godwoken. Another sacrifice I was forced to make. Those beautiful people. I was as kind as I could be. I promise you that. As I say, one last sacrifice is required. Yours. Then let us proceed. Show some responsibility. Surrender your source! You'll be a hero. Everyone will know of the sacrifice you'll make. Your name will be synonymous with the survival of Rivalon. Don't let them do this to us. But our souls. There has to be another way. No. Never. I understand. Sacrifice takes courage. But I shall help you. Though it pains me. Your sacrifice shall be made for you. Dallas. I'm sorry. You've come such a long way. But there is too much at stake. This is... the end. Yeah. 
Are you feeling poorly, Dallas? Good. You shall not seal the veil. And now it is time. I call on the God King. Come claim what is yours. How? What? You are unleashed. Surprise, surprise, surprise. You left the leashing wand next to me, you stupid maggot. So accustomed had you become to me pretending to be your slave. Kill him. Do shut up, you tedious buffoon. And don't look so surprised. As if I would allow a bone bag to enslave me. Me! Bracchus Rex, you ignorant dog. Bracchus! Kill him. Now. Too late, you moldering blight-stained pigs. Grant me power, my ally. God King, I call on you. You dare interrupt, Bracchus Rex. How novel. <laughs> Who are you to challenge the Source King? Ha! Ah, you are the fetid dirt on my boot. You are nothing at all. I am the Source King. I shall rule. I <laughs> My ally sends me a pet. What a fitting gift. Ruling the world with a bloody fist can be lonely. I needed a companion. Come to your father. Come to the Source King.
You're not trying to escape, are you?
seems, is done. I never possessed such mastery of source. I can only hope your choice is wise and true, Godwoken. I have made mistakes, but wisdom and truth, these are still values I believe in and always did. Dallas groans in pain. I have failed. The future of all that is rests on your shoulders. You're wrong. About power, I mean. I was always kidding myself that I could only help my people if I were free. Lead them by example, you know. Thing is, I can never be free. So I must choose the dwarven people's liberty in exchange for my own. Whether I serve them as divine or in another way, well, I entrust this to you. Beast bows in return. There's no denying the glint in his eye. Whatever the future holds, he is game for it. Listen, this is it. Again. And I want you to know I'm not putting up a fight, not against you. My revels are now ended. Yours are about to begin. I've had my vengeance, my life and my liberty. You helped me win them back. And then, when you told me you loved me, all of me awoke. All I want now is for this to end, to be by your side when we wage the final battle. And long, long after. I know you do, and I love you too. Now kiss me. You kiss each other passionately, ready to face the darkest dark. Here we stand, once more on the cusp of divinity. But this cup, so long thirsted for, I willfully let it pass from me. All my life has been a lead up to this, to be the king of kings, god of gods. I will not say it was in vain, but I will say it was vanity. If I were to chance upon my throne right now, I would sit down beside it, cast my glance to the horizon, and think of worthier things. I'd think of Sadha, my great love. I'd think of my children, their joyous dance through fiery skies. And of course, I'd think of you, of the adventures we had, of our unlikely yet heartfelt friendship. Yes, I'd sit there, thoroughly contented, and wait for you to ascend the throne. I know. A mischievous smile. But I do have to add, likewise. You think back on your journey here, on all you have seen, on how the Magisters hunted sorcerers who committed horrible crimes, and purged sorcerers who only tried to heal the sick. You think of how the Eternals unleashed void-woken horror on the world in an effort to reclaim it. You look at the source around you. You know that within your reach is divinity. You think of what you could do with such power. Seeing the vast quantity of source in front of you, you think you should be able to handle a couple of void woken. You think of your personal problems. It's time to make a choice. A choice that decides the fate of Rivalon and of you. Where do you stand? After all that you have been through and all that you have done, all that you have become, the Aetiran lies in front of you. Divinity is yours to take, or to sacrifice. What you do next decides your own fate and the future of the world. What shall you do with divinity? And so it ended. 
a tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the Godwoken. When the dust settled, no new divine had risen. Instead, all source was released into the world for all the people and every creature to share. Everyone was now a sorcerer. And united, the peoples of Rivalon pushed back the God King into the very depths of the void. This ushered in a new golden age of peace and prosperity. But alas, it was not to last. With many greedy for wealth, power and position, the struggle soon began anew. Source, the very language of creation, was used in violence once more. The never-ending contest for power continued. As for me, my last hope of ever being freed of the God King's terrible tyranny faded when the Godwoken failed to seal the veil. An eternity of pain and suffering is mine, in service of the King, until the day I am freed, the day the God King returns. Well, well, look what the cat dragged in. A godwoken. But what good is it to be godwoken when Source is now a free-for-all and there is no divinity to be had? Don't fool yourself. In the absence of a master, a master will rise. King, God, there is still power to be had. As long as there is power, there is conflict. Source for all... It is but the dream of an idiot, who will soon wake to find his wrists in shackles. In that sense, I suppose I should look upon it all as an opportunity. People crave authority. They'll beg for a sorcerer king like me. And I give you the assurance of disappointment. He sighs, which seems to ease his surly countenance. Ah, oh, but come. We've travelled too long by one another's side to end with an argument. We'll not part on bad terms, will we? Home. After all, I've dragons to raise. I need to teach them to be good boys and girls before they set the entire world on fire. There may be an accident or two along the way. Can't be helped, I'm afraid. I do so long to see my palace again. The Forbidden City. The sense of spices and incense. The sound of sitars in far-off rooms. To sit all day in perfumed shade and watch the white of the marble change with the journey of the sun. But above all, I long to be with Sadha. Long to finally have the time to love. Oh, uh, but before you go, remember how when we first met, I took you by the jaw to inspect your teeth? Not something one forgets in a hurry. Now, if you'll recall, as per your own testimony, you've no culinary skills, you lack a sense of fashion, and you've little or no regard for personal hygiene. A damning assessment, if ever there was one. Still, I'm nothing, if not a tolerant man, who believes in individual growth. I'm sure the journey taught you much. As such, I'd like to offer you what I denied you before, the opportunity to become my slave. What say you? Taken quite by surprise, he staggers back, blood dripping down his nostrils. I take that as a no, then. Fair enough. But next time, please, use your words. Malady stands tall and proud, sunlight sparkling off her mask. From here, she looks almost angelic. Well, here we are again. You, me, and the ship I've saved from ruin for your personal benefit. I'd say you owe me, but why state the obvious? Get an eyeful. I expect it's the last we'll see of each other for some time. I've a lot of planning to do, now that there's not to be a new divinity. She drums her fingers testily on her crossed arms. All that work, all that effort, tossed into the gutter like a malformed child. You say that now. 
Let's see how you feel when you realise the true implication of a world filled with sorcerers. <sighs> Never mind. I'll find another way. I always do. She fingers the mask, covering her face. For a moment, it seems as though she's about to remove it. But instead, she places a hand on your shoulder. We've come a long way together. I did my best by you all the way. Sacrificed much. And I'd have given even more to see you fulfill your destiny. She looks you up and down. I guess this will have to do. Take a moment, why don't you? Relax. Enjoy. I certainly plan to do the same. The same way I do everything, of course. Demonic guile. Oh, I don't know. Around and about. Treat myself to some mead, a lover or three hundred. I'd say we've earned it. Perhaps our paths will cross again. Perhaps not. Until we find out. I've got to admit, I'm all about returning the power to the people. But I never could have seen this one coming. He eyes you slyly, but consents to one final tale. The beast of the sea rose triumphant, guiding his fellow godwoken from an island prison to a final hurrah. He boarded the Lady Vengeance, now inexplicably whole due to magic a beast could never understand, and returned to his homeland. Then began the process of rebuilding, restoring trust, handing out hope. Serving his people. Huh. Guess that one doesn't really end with a bang. But that's all right. You know, it's a work in progress. Source of all, eh? A bold move, I'll grant you that. I didn't think anyone considered the little people anymore. Hmm. I don't know yet. Perhaps peace will reign and all will be equal. Or perhaps you've bestowed great power on undeserving children and turned them loose on each other. Time will tell, I'm sure. That is the question, isn't it? How does one top the greatest feat of necromancy ever conceived? I might have the answer to that. Tell me, have you ever heard of Gustafjan? No, of course you wouldn't. It's a written language, unreadable to most myself, naturally. It comes from a mysterious race from another world. Beings that feed on minds. I intend to seek them out. This Gustafjan seems to guard portals to their realm. And once I've uncovered one, well, why settle for being the greatest mind in just one world when there's another for the taking? So... Here we are, my darling. Sorcerers like everyone else in the realm. A bit boring to be so unexceptional all of a sudden, isn't it? Then again, I suppose they can't fit all of us in Fort Joy. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Good times, though. We've come to the brink and back again so many times on this adventure. I only hope what awaits the world is something more... equitable. Bit more sun. Bit less rain, even though I love the rain. That quite depends on you, I suppose. She laughs, and it's music to your soul. We want each other, after all. We love each other, after all. Let others play the game of gods. Love conquers even divinity. It gives me almost as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to be whole again. Consider me to be a gift from Malady. My wood was splintered, but my spirit intact. It was a great feat, but given her skill, not a surprising one. I cannot say whether the future brings peace or pain, but I will always be an ally to those that carry source, to those whose blood is of the heroes of old, and so, as always, I am at the ready. 
You look out to the endless beyond. The sun's light plays upon the waves, just as it always did. The sails flutter in the wind, just as they always will. And yet, something is different. You are different. And with a start, you realise where you must go next. You speak the command to the Lady Vengeance, and another chapter begins. The world was at peace, at least for now. With its significance as the seat of divinity diminished, arcs fell into decline, and within seven generations had emptied. Few were as prepared for the new world as the lizard kin of the ancient empire. With power spread equally throughout the world, the advantage lay with those who knew how to steal it, and at this the lizards excelled. Justinia returned to her throne. Under her rule, the dwarven kingdom prospered, until two years later a jealous lover stabbed her in the heart with a mutton fork. With their power returned, the elves reclaimed their lands from the death fog and began to rebuild. Soon they would split as two factions sought power, one to bring back the trees, the other to bring back the scions. A dwarven joke did the rounds. It ends with the punchline, So Lucian dropped the death fog on them again. And in a dark forest on the far side of a desert, well beyond the high seas, the Black Ring came together once more. The island of Fort Joy, the old redoute of the source king Bracchus Rex, was turned over to the people of Driftwood to use as they wished. They turned it into a holiday resort. Reaper's coast prospered. The fisheries returned, and the fertile farmlands produced the greatest harvests the surviving farmers had ever seen. Blood Moon Island became particularly fecund, its soil producing the greatest crops. A particularly crimson-fleshed orange grown on the island became a delicacy across half the world. The black pits took fire, the oil there burns still. Driftwood became a centre of industry, trade and transport. Lagan left his over-demanding wife and began a relationship with a local bard. In the spirit of loving generosity, he returned the ring to his now ex-wife. In a fit of rage, she threw it into the sea. The nameless isle had vanished. Although only open water remained, by instinct ships would steer clear. None of the captains could articulate why. Millennia later, adventurers would come in search of the legendary divine city of Arx and the crypt of the great Lucian. None would pass the path of blood. Young Han went into the theatre and became one of the realm's most popular actors. With no new divine, Malady found herself in a predicament. She had an important problem to solve, but no ally strong enough to call upon, and so her search continued. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy in history, Tarquin found the new world unchallenging. He became obsessed with rumours of another plane of existence. One day he vanished and was never seen again. Riker remained in his graveyard mansion, served by the spirits newly arrived there, and of those there were many. Jahan the demon hunter found himself at a loose end, so he opened a museum of demonic artefacts. After it burned down, with Jahan inside, witnesses claimed that the flames were the colour of blood. As the forests grew anew and the elves were equals at last, Sahela shared elven knowledge of source with the world. But some elves disagreed and plotted against her. Chief amongst her opponents was Tova, Sahela's own mother. The Beast of the Sea returned to the Dwarven Kingdom, this time as a lawmaker. After a very public blunder, Marcus eschewed political power and returned to the sea. The Beast and the Lady Vengeance sail on. Sibyl wandered the world. She became a household name, famed the realm over as a travelling hero, celebrated wherever she went. Enjoying life to the fullest, she was truly and finally free. The Red Prince came home a hero. Soon Prince became Emperor, and his armies marched on their neighbours. 
the Red Empire was born, and his house remained true to its name. There was never a day without war. And then there was you. You returned to the world a sorcerer among many. Your future was yours to decide. Did you accept your new status with humility? Only you know the truth. Only you know if you atone for your sins.